having covered the, some of the fundamental underlying concepts of business strategy or strategic planning, um, I would like now to get into more of a little bit more applied uh, definitions and share those with you. And I will uh, welcome your feedback after this um, session before we go to a break. One of the important things when doing a business uh, in business strategy or doing a strategic business plan is to first describing for the planner and for the plan itself, for the context, is what is the background to this context. You know, you could have a situation where there's a distressed tenor. A distressed tenor of a business yields itself to a different type of a strategic plan. You could have a steady state business that carries on in terms of its continuity of its operations. You can have a rapid growth context. Or it could be a startup. So one of the important things in, in setting up a strategic framework for a plan is to uh, be clear about that. And that makes sense. I'm sure all of you agree with me. The other one is this concept of vision and mission. It has been used extensively. And there are some very well established strategic business planning um, frameworks by some large consulting operations widely used, uh, uh, some to, to a better degree, some to a lesser degree. But this concept of vision and mission has been uh, almost ubiquitous. One of the shortcomings of jumping onto a vision and mission and sticking with it, as good as a tool it is, is that it could become uh, wish-driven slogans. We will have, we will be the most profitable entity in our industry, and we will serve our employees, and we value our customers higher. You know, there's great um, statements. Nothing wrong with that. But what does it mean? You put it on the wall in the office, and it becomes a slogan. Our vision and mission are very important concepts that, if embodied and structured properly, they're very potent and very valuable indeed. Vision is about direction. Vision is about the right thing to do, as is uh, covered in the literature. Vision is about directorship. Vision is about synthetic judgment, as we covered before. Mission is about doing the thing right. Mission is about management. Mission is about efficiency. Let's say, by the way, for example, a general comes in and says, let's capture that castle on top of that hill. It's a military objective. Let's go this way, vision. Let's do that. Mission is, OK, how are we going to capture it? Are we going to go around the hill? Are we going to straight up? How many soldiers we need? How many days it takes? If you have a wrong vision and you're very good with your mission, if you've got good with your direction but you're bad with your management, well, you're not going to be able to implement it. We will see later that mission is associated with implementation. Vision is associated with formulation. If you have formulation, that's quite good, and it's often the case, but you do not have good mission, good implementation steps, the strategic plan will have, provide suboptimal outcomes and, in fact, fails. Paradoxically, and funny enough, if you don't have good vision, you don't know exactly where you're going, but you're very efficient with your mission, with your implementation. Well, if you go in the wrong, wrong direction, you go bankrupt twice as fast as anybody else, because even in the wrong direction, you're very efficient taking the wrong direction. So the vision and mission, formulation and implementation, go hand in hand. They need to be stated, as most of, the, uh, most of us agree, and it's commonplace in, in the literature, and in, in the applied versions of the literature. But I would like to share with you, and I submit to you, that it's worthwhile, and that's how we're doing in unified theory of business strategy within our software and our theoretical framework, that at the end of the strategic business planning process, you revise them slightly. Because by then, you know what resources you need, what you can do, what you cannot do, your finances, your things like that, the resources. So it can be, and it's worthwhile revising them and iterating them. So that's vision and mission. The other thing is important in strategic business planning is this concept of value proposition or unique selling proposition, which again, very important tool. But things important to consider when you have a look at value proposition is 
that is one of those concepts that requires context as well as content. A value proposition on its own doesn't mean anything unless there is a market opportunity out there for it. There is a market failure, if you like. There is a latent demand for it or a current demand for it. And your content, your solution is applicable to that external context. So value proposition requires external context applied, applicable internal content. I'll give an example. Let's say the government increases the axle loads, allowable axle loads for trucks, for freight. Well, that's a great thing. The transport industry can carry more loads, they need the bigger trucks, but there's no technology for brake systems to retard the higher kinetic energy of the larger trucks. Now, our company has the ability either to provide such a technology to the transport industry or develop it. Well, we've got a value proposition because there's an external market context for it, and we've got an applied, applicable content for it, external, internal. In many cases, you've got a latent demand, which is a demand that has not been met, and you've got a value proposition for it. However, we also need to be comfortable with, the with, with, the, with, the, with a set of circumstances that we might say, we don't have a value proposition, or we don't know if we have it. That is much more credible in the context of a strategic business planning, same as risk analysis, to say, we don't know what it is, we don't know if we have it, rather than relying on a slogans which make the plan less effective, less credible. Similar to the points I made about vision and mission. So I would like to leave you with those concepts, with those thoughts on value proposition. The other thing that I would like to share with you, and this come back from the feedback I received from the participants in prior sessions and some of my uh, scholar colleagues, is the concept of industry versus market. In many of these strategic business planning processes, you find this mixture of about industry and market. Now, one of the, as you know, one of the great uh, tools used in the industry to great effectiveness in, uh, Industry Five Forces uh, by Michael Porter attempts to combine these two within its five elements. But generally, let's just have some dichotomy of these two concepts. Industry is where the activities, the economic value added that you or your entity does in providing in your value chain, another concept of market Porter, that you your activities. I am in uh, automotive industry. I'm producing automotive components that goes into a OEM, original equipment manufacturer. My industry is manufacturing industry, sub-industry, automotive manufacturing. I'm in transport. I run trucks. So my industry is transport industry, sub-industry is road freight. OK, so it's an area, sector, and the word sector needs to be more associated with industry. I mean, a sector of this kind of activity where I produce my activities, where I produce my value added output, services or goods. Market is where the buyers of my services and goods reside, where they give me economic return in the form of capital, money, sales for the services that are produced in my industry. In some cases, the market and industry overlap. In the example I gave you, if I'm making automotive components for an OEM, well, my market is also in the automotive market. The word segment needs to be more associated with the market, the same as sector is associated with industry. In this example, the industry and market, they overlap because the buyers of my good are within the same industry where I actually conduct my activities to produce goods and services. But that's not often the case. In the example of the road transport, let's say I've got road transport, road fleet, but I'm carrying uh, fuel for some oil industry distributors, or I'm carrying retail for some grocery retailers. In this example, my industry is in transport, sub-industry in road transport, but my market is in retail. My market is in the oil industry retail or, or uh, grocery retail. They are separate. So one of the things important to consider is our industry and market. And also, 
messages that says this is a multi-billion dollar industry or is a multi-billion dollar market, that always has to be associated with a significant marketing plan because a multi-billion dollar market requires a tens of millions of dollars of marketing advertising just about. So that is very important, which we get back to, or well, we will cover later in the marketing plan. Another one, the last one I want to uh, share with you in terms of applied uh, uh, definitions of uh, strategic business planning is the separation of formulation from implementation to evaluation. I touched on formulation and implementation in the vision and mission context, and it's the same thing. You formulate, when you formulate, you have primarily looking at your external activities, your internal resources, the combination of two, what we're gonna be, what we're gonna sell, we cover that in the marketing. The marketing part of the business plan looks at the formulation very much. Then you move into in implementation. In implementation, what do I do in terms of regular processes, procedures, and communication, which we cover later? What do I do in terms of building capacity, which is a subset of these processes and procedures and communication, to build my capacity? How is this capacity built? Why is it built? Because it comes from our formulation, some critical factors that comes from risk analysis, competitive analysis, five forces, pastel, or a mismatch of my resources internally to my possibilities externally, potential externally. We'll cover that in the marketing plan. But the formulation part of a strategy a strategic business planning needs to be separated from implementation. Once you formulated what I just covered, then we go into implementation. And the link between implementation and formulation are those decisions about processes and procedures and communication and building resources. Then there's a third element called evaluation. How are we going? After the first year or second year of a strategy, we decided to go this way, we ended up this way. How do we go back this way? Is it bad that we ended up this way? There must be actually a better way. Evaluation is associated with lagged indicators. We're primarily embedded in the financial sector of the business, uh, segments of the business plan, part of the business plan. Financial uh, sector, uh, financial part has got flow variables. You remember those in terms of profit and loss statement? It's got a stock variables in terms of balance sheet and uh, cash flow. Uh, statement and so forth, they're primarily lagged indicators that explain the evaluation of the business plan. So the three elements of formulation, implementation, evaluation, is best kept aside. When we formulate, we don't get into implementation. We're doing risk analysis, we don't straight away say what we're going to do about it. We identify the risk later on implementation with a program to deal with it if it's critical. Formulation, implementation, evaluation. Industry versus market. Value proposition, context, external, content, internal. They're matching. Vision, formulation, mission, implementation. And all encapsulated, what's the background? Is it a startup? Is it a growth? Is it a distressed turnaround? Those elements have, need to be best conceptually taken into consideration before embarking on implementing, uh, drafting, and constructing a business plan, which we cover in the next sessions um, over the next uh, few hours.